Hey YouTube, welcome back to uh, Detroit Shrimp and Aquatics. Uh, I wanted to bring you a couple of things today. I haven't made a video in a few days. Um, been sick, uh, and I don't know if you guys seen in a few videos before. I was in a bad accident; my neck's all jacked up, but that's getting a little better. Uh, but yeah, I'm sick. Got this really bad cough with all this phlegmy garbage and nose I can't breathe and now Luke's sick and but anyways uh he stayed home from school today I have to go take care of my mother today so uh you know she's uh getting older and if we don't take care of our mothers you know uh they took care of us so we have to take care of our parents and uh <clears throat> sad to say my father passed away in 2014 so you know, um, uh, now, I, now I make sure that, uh, you know, I put as much time as I can, give my mother as much uh, attention as possible, um, you know, because she's elderly. I still let her live by herself. She'll be moving in here um, soon. Let's see if I can focus in on this. Uh, it's focusing in on the, the plants in the back. There it is party this is my orange eye blue tiger tank i'm sure you guys all know but so yeah so me and luke are gonna go do that today but i wanted to uh make a video today uh talk about a few things um i'm gonna talk about panicure c so i want to talk about planaria in your tank uh and a couple other things so anyways, um, I came here the other day, uh, was, I have to cut back on this tank, the plants, they're doing what I want to do, they're getting really big, you know, I cut them back, uh, lop them off, you know, they're getting really bushy and thick, and I move them to other tanks, but, uh, oh, sorry, that's real fuzzy, but, uh, you know, so, I have to do that, but as of right now, um, I had planaria in the tank, so I saw some, I saw some, uh, planaria in there, the little flatworms with the triangle head, and, uh, the thing is, is in these tanks, you know, it's, I barely have it anymore, you know, because I changed my feeding, uh, tremendously, that was really, really hard to do, and I'll explain to you what I did there, that's the other topic I want to talk about today is, uh, feeding, and how it's, uh, changed things for me. But uh, the planaria, in my opinion, come when you overfeed. Uh, they live in the substrate. Well, they live in the tank, but they hang out in the substrate. Then they come out, you know, uh, and they can sting the shrimp and, you know, just create havoc within the tank. Well, as you guys see, I keep some fish in some tanks and what i do is i put the fish in there little itty bitty uh nano fish to eat like seed shrimp stuff like that because i don't like seeing it go around i know my tanks are super healthy i don't need to see seed shrimp everywhere so i throw them in there they're super healthy they're getting all that live food you know it's less i gotta feed so they clean the tank for me so i saw planaria well i don't like planaria i don't like see it because you know i wouldn't want uh a flatworm crawling on me if i was in there and i would want uh you know whoever was taking care of me to take care of business so uh this is the thing it's not hard you know don't freak out if you got planaria you know if you got anything you know it's it's really not hard to get rid of it's it's quite simple oh and i'm doing a water change too because i did the planaria a few days ago and it's ran its course and i only put one well we'll talk about that so anyways, don't freak out. It's no big deal. Don't say, well, I can't get shrimp because, oh my gosh, they're going to get planaria. This, and oh, I don't want it. It's, look, they say, oh, well, you could put up to three doses. I've never put more than a dose. Never, ever, ever put more than a dose. And I just don't see it anymore. You know, maybe four or five months down the road, I might see something in here again. But for right now, ooh, I thought she was buried. She's a big one. Pretty. But, uh nothing so here it is this is pancure seed dog dewormer okay 
Uh, I got it online. My wife got it for me. I think she got it on Amazon. Uh, you know, places sell it. But it wasn't bad. Uh, Price-wise. I got it. I bought... I wanted to get quite a bit of it. So here's the packages. I got four one-gram packages. Uh, and the, the main... Uh, the main uh, ingredient in, in here is, man, I'm sorry, this isn't, it's probably seeing the, oh, uh, there it is, and my shakes don't help. It's fenbendazole. So that's the main ingredient in here. Now there's fenbendazole in like almost every dog dewormer, but I don't know. I don't know if you can use other ones. No one really talks about it, so I'm not going to say that those work. I got this off of uh, a guy who knows a lot. Uh, I learn a lot from the guy. Uh, and he's actually not far from me in Ohio. I live in Michigan, and that's uh, Rob at Flip Aquatics. Uh, I don't know Rob. I've never spoke to Rob. I watch Rob's videos uh, every once in a while because, look, the guy's you know, he does something right. So, you know, he knows his business, and, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll, I'll watch his stuff and learn. I mean, I appreciate that he teaches me and... Uh, many other people, you know, about the hobby. But, so anyways, that. So all I do, and I got this off Rob, and I think I even dosed less than what Rob said, or maybe the same, it doesn't matter, but I take this pack, and actually, here's the little pack I got left. There's so much in it, I just roll it up, put a rubber band around it. But I take these little McDonald's spoons. This little baby spoon. See how thin that is? There's not much. Can't put much on it. Let me get it on that lady. You know, if, you, if anybody knows about McDonald's, if you're my age, I mean, the McDonald's spoons were even cooler than this, but it was the coffee stir spoons. But anyways, uh, up oh, this tank's getting full. I, I do a level, sometimes even less. I just sprinkle it across the top. Just sprinkle it across the top of the water, leave it. Now, it'll float. It's going to float all around the top of the tank. You're going to be like, oh, well, it's floating. What the heck's it doing? Oh, the bucket's running out. Good. Yeah, I'm filling it up. Uh, well, I did the water chains, and here's the reason why. Uh, not trying to get off of what I was saying, but the reason you do the water chains, and, and it's happened to me because I haven't done it. I've forgotten. But there's so much, you know, I don't know. Let's say there's... A hundred little planaria worms in your tank. Well, when you put that uh, Pancure C in there, it kills them. So those hundred worms or however many are in there, uh, they die. So when they die, it creates ammonia. You know, it's you got a bunch of death in there. Well, look, these aren't fish. They're little itty bitty shrimp. And in my opinion, the littlest amount of, see, that's what I'm saying. Don't freak out about this because it's, I mean, you know, it, it, we're talking about using medication, not daily living in the tank. But in my opinion, you know, the little amount of change like that with the ammonia, uh, it can, it can kill a shrimp, you know, uh, if it gets, if it hits too much ammonia in the tank, you know, some, a weaker shrimp might die. And it's happened to me. Uh, so I, I give it a three-day run, and then I change the water. But I'm telling you, after you put it in, uh, the next day, you don't see a thing. And then I never see them after that. Um, I don't get it in every tank, but... Uh, or, who knows, maybe half, maybe a little less. I'm not sure I never counted, but uh, it's... It's something that comes, you know, and it's it's due to the fact that, uh, you know, you overfeed. Food gets down into the substrate, and, uh, you know, it sits in there and rots, and, you know, heck if I know where they grow from, but, you know, I'm not a scientist. Like I said, just uh, somebody, uh, you know, trying to bring you some tips, tools, and strategies when it comes to uh, breeding Neocaridinia and Caridinia shrimp. Uh, because those that know me, I do breed both. I do raise both. So I uh, try to talk about both. Uh, let's see if I get this. Oh, he's just a little pretty one. He's uh, about the size of 
uh, maybe a rice and a half if you put it, if you lay them tip to tip. That's about how long it is. So anyways, uh, so yep, did Pancare C. Kill the, kill the, uh, kill the, the worms, uh, you know, they're all dead, creates ammonia, you know, you want to do a water change around the three day mark, you know, try not to forget because I mean, I, I don't know if you can just have one, uh, planaria in your tank, highly doubtful. If you see planaria, there's probably quite a few in there. So, uh, you want to get it changed, give them some fresh water. So whatever's in there, because I'll tell you right now, I don't care. You could test your ammonia. And your ammonia, it's me, anyone who has a test kit knows that if they test their ammonia, there's literally no ammonia. I mean, that, that test kit, it'll stay really like a clear yellow, you know, it'll turn yellow, but it'd be clear. But when it starts to get like a heavy, thick yellow, and you can't tell if it's changing and getting a little green, that's what tells me that that's, I mean, it's too much for shrimp. I mean, they can live in whatever, but... You know, if you got something dying, you're like, what the heck? Well, that's why. You know, some shrimp uh, can only tolerate so much stuff. So, but the thing is, that's what I'm saying. It's only when you dose the medication. So don't freak out and go, oh my gosh, I don't want shrimp or I don't want caridinia shrimp. Uh, uh, you know, because it doesn't matter. It happens in neotanks too. So... No matter what, you're doing it in any tank that gets it. So it's up to you uh, whether or not, you know, you do water changes. But if you don't, I'm telling you right now, you're going to have death. So you don't want death. Like I said, I'm just trying to bring you some tips. Uh, I don't know really if it's a trick because it's not a secret. But a lot of people are like, dog dewormer, oh my gosh, where do I get it? Who gets a dog dewormer? How do you dose a dog dewormer? Oh, and another thing, 10 gallon or 20 gallon, that little, this little stir, uh, this little stir, I do the same. It don't matter. This is all I use in this 20 gallon, and like I said, I'll go less than a 10. I don't do any more than this. I've never had an issue to where I had to put in, you know, three doses because they say you can go up to three doses but i believe don't quote me on it but i believe rob at flip aquatic says you can't overdose you know you can't like kill your shrimp so you know it's shrimp safe i never ever ever that i know of and i said i'm not a scientist so i can't tell you exactly why shrimp die or if they've ever died from me putting panic in but i've never seen it in a tank now, I've seen them die from not doing, you know, like one shrimp from not doing a water change three to four to five days later. Um, and that's my fault. So, I try to get on that immediately and that's why I'm doing this video because I was doing the water change. Uh, so, the other part I wanted to talk about is um, I have a friend who owns a pet store. And uh, he sells a lot of my shrimp. Uh, well... He has uh, two types of shrimp in the store, and it seems like every time somebody comes into the store, they say, oh my gosh, those are beautiful shrimp, uh, which are caridinia. Uh, you know, they like the neo caridinia too, but they see the colors because I have snow whites and I have these crystal reds uh, at his store. And they say, oh my gosh, those are so pretty. Uh, what kind of shrimp are those? And they'll say, oh, well, those are caridinia. Because everybody, here's questions everybody asks. Well, almost everybody. I can't say everybody. But I'm there quite a bit, you know, taking care of the stuff I, you know, get in his store. You know, making sure things are done right and uh, you know, the shrimp are healthy, but, so those, they say, oh, well, uh, can they, can they be housed together? Can they live together? And we and they tell, oh yeah, the neocaridinia can live together, but they'll give you just wilds and garbage when they breed. Well, that's not true. I mean, to an extent, I mean, you can get new colors, 
you know, you can get the, what some people had called Superman or the Spider-Man. Uh, you know, you can get different shades. You know, anything can happen, and then you can go from there and, and breed out and try to get more stuff. But, yes, you, you know, there's a chance that it will revert back to a wild shrimp. So they tell them that, and they kind of, they're like, oh, man, well, I don't want that. Instead of explaining to them, well, you know, you can, you don't have to keep those in your tank. You can call them, uh, you know, remove them from your tank. It's quite simple, uh, you know, and they won't be in there, and you can keep the colors that you have in there. Well, then they see the Caradenia, and they're like, oh, my gosh, look at those colors. And uh, uh, for you guys to see what those what the snow whites are they're these ones here this tank's just packed i uh i tuned up the i tuned up the uh the filters yesterday with all this power i have now in here i had all the filters turned down and you know like the filter pads weren't getting dirty because they're not sucking the water through and you know, but my tanks aren't dirty. I mean, it's just as crystal clear as, you know, let everything grow. It's pretty. Well, anyways, I want to get off track here. So, you know, you have these there and you have the crystal reds. And they'll be like, well, can these go together? Oh, yeah, they can go together. But these take different water. You know, they're a little harder to raise than the Neocaridinia. Now, I'm not saying that that's not true, but it, it's not hard. I mean, yeah, look, you got to get a different water. I'm trying to get this galaxy in here. There it is. I see a little bit of it. But uh, it's not harder. I mean, to an extent, there's you have to do a little more stuff. I mean, you can't just get water right out of the tap and run with it. You know, so you gotta, you know, you gotta do a little more stuff, but it's not harder. And that's what people immediately uh, are getting scared, and they're like, oh, yeah, oh, no, yeah, I don't want, I don't want that. Those are PRLs, and these are uh, Crystal Blacks. But, uh, you know, so it... It's like uh, stopping people from wanting to, uh, you know, develop, you know, their skills into the other half when there's, I mean, there's no need to do that. It's kind of like it, they're scaring them. And there's no need to be scared when it comes to, to these guys. You know, because it all comes down, to be honest, it all comes down to uh, the tank. As so many people say, and it's so true, you have to have a cycle tank. I'm sorry, there's a lot of glare from the basement window here, but these are my fancy. This stuff was all green, then uh, it melted back. So we're going to leave it for a little while and see if it comes back. It's starting to come back. I mean, it's really nice moss, but, you know, sometimes stuff melts back. But, yeah, this is... A fancy tank. Uh, you know, you guys have seen it. I gotta trim some stuff. My boost came out. The one piece is floating. But, yeah, it's, uh, like I said, it's my super old tank. Chrome with the slate bottom. But, uh, yeah, anyway, so, it's not hard. Uh, it's nothing to be afraid about. It's nothing to say... Oh my gosh, I R-O water, what is that? It's like those two letters scare people, R-O. You know, and it's like, run on, or, you know, something, and it's and it's not, it's, it's quite, quite simple. I mean, to put a scoop of salt in, and to test it with your, and stir it up and test it with your TDS meter, and just get it to the number that you're supposed to have it at, super simple. I mean, it's the easiest thing in the world. You stir it up, and then you just put it in the in the tank at a slow speed. Doesn't have to be a rabbit crawl, but slow enough to where you know it's healthy for the shrimp. But look, 
I put some fresh water in there, and these guys are all over the place. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so, it, it's the thing is, is I suffer from it, and I know a lot of people suffer from it, but it's a slow and steady process. My my issue all the time is, oh my gosh, how come they're not breeding? I mean, I got I have shrimp here still that I bought, you know, five months ago, still haven't bred yet. And I, the tank's right next to them. You know, they're finally buried and they're having babies. But, you know, the, the weather's changing. It's like all of a sudden now it's enticing them to breed. Uh, I don't know if I just have finicky shrimp on some. But, uh, yeah, some just chose to take forever. And some just won't stop breeding. Uh, you know, so yeah, it's, it, it's just, you got to take your time. You got to let them do their thing. Don't try to speed them up, you know, don't freak out. And, but see, these are the things that, you know, I suffer from <laughs> because I want it now. I want satisfaction, uh, you know, now I bought them, you know, um, I'm a, you know, I started wanted to start this business for my family. I wanted to become a breeder that, you know, is bringing stuff to people that the quality that's hard to find or, you know, well, like I said, hard to find or uh, hard to obtain due to, you know, someone living in another country and they can't ship it in, but I have just as good a quality, you know, stuff like that. Uh... You know, and it gets discouraging, and I want to speed it up, and I'll message people, and I'll call people, and be like, what's going on, what's going on, and you know, next thing I know, I turn around, and there's babies, and I turn around again, and there's more babies, so it's, you just got to be slow, it's got slow and steady, you know, uh, you just got to take your time, it's, you know, it, it's like a marathon and not you know you're not running you're not sprinting you know so it's you just want to kind of let your cards fall where they will and accept what you have at that time I mean it doesn't look like there's a ton of shrimp in here but there's quite a few shrimp in here I don't know exactly the number but uh, I saw I saw a couple uh, buried females the other day so we got more coming. It's like, you know, they bred once, they did great, and then it just, boop, stopped. So I don't, I think there's like two, two mamas had babies, you know, because there's a good, good amount of shrimp in here. So that's another thing I noticed. Having 10 or t even 20, these are 20 gallon long tanks. Having a just 10 shrimp, sometimes it takes long. Having 20 shrimp, sometimes it takes long. Uh, you know, sometimes they get together really quick like they want to breed. Um, and sometimes they don't. Now, I mean, it can be all sorts of stuff. It could be, here's another thing. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's a learning curve. So, Joe Franklin in, oh, I don't know, uh... Germany can say, I have uh, my shrimp in such and such water. Uh, these are my parameters. Okay. Well, then you're like, oh, well, okay. Joe's got his stuff in this parameters. Let me put my stuff in these parameters too because he does so well. Well, the thing is, is you put your stuff in the same parameters he has, but you don't have the same water he has. So... It doesn't matter if you put yourself in the same parameters as he is. You're probably not going to have the same uh, success due to the fact that you don't have the same water. Uh, even if you use an RO and it pulls everything out, in my opinion and in my opinion only, uh, there can be other substances within the water that you know, don't get caught in an RO unit or, uh, you know, it's just, like I said, it's a, 
you know, you're in a whole nother country, you live so far away, you know, the pressure of the air, this, that, I mean, there's so many things, you have colder climates, hotter climates, temperatures, uh, humidity, um, it's really dry, you know, anything can, you know, play a part, in my opinion, you know, I mean, I know fish live anywhere, but not every fish lives everywhere. And not every shrimp lives everywhere. I mean, I can go down to the lakes down here and I'll never find a shrimp like this. So, they don't live here. Uh, at least, not that I know of. Um, but who knows, there's possibility. There's possibility about everything. But look at this. Oh my gosh. What a color. This guy, let me try zooming this in. This is my orange eye blue tiger tank. And he is not blue at all, but he's like a purple. Whoa, look at that. Woo. Or she, I should say she. That looks like a she to me. What do you guys think? Get a thumbs up if you think that's a mama. It sure looks like it to me. Get that mama buried up. Maybe we can get some more of that purple going. Uh, so... Those are things that you take into consideration. So, like I said, it's not all—it's not always the simplest with that. Your your shrimp aren't going to die, but here's where the work comes in. Now you start to play with things like uh, your TDS, uh, your GHKH. Um, you you know because they'll say, oh well, somebody will say, well, this shrimp likes a little KH. Uh, I have it in my tanks, and they seem to thrive and breed with some KH. Some guys, I mean, you know, some big-time guys, yep, oh, yep, no KH. And you're like, but this guy has KH. You have no KH. So what's, I don't understand. Well, it's hard to understand. The thing is, is you just need to tweak it in where you live. So if, let's say, you have 100 TDS and you try everything on a low a uh, spectrum of, uh, you know, the radar, then maybe take it up to 105, then 110, or I mean 110, I'm sorry, there's not a number 110, unless it's 1,010, uh, you know, 115, 120, 125, you know, you want to stay around there, no, you really don't want to creep over 130, I mean, that's even, you know, getting up there, but you know, test stuff because you could hit 115 and oh my gosh, and next thing you know, all your all your shrimp are buried and you got babies everywhere because they feel better. You know, the water is more to their liking. Uh, my Snow Whites, they're at stinking 142 when they just started spitting babies everywhere. I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, 142 because I keep their tank at like uh, 130. Um, and I missed a water change, and I went over there and checked it, and, you know, here's another thing. I was overfeeding, you know, so my TDS levels would go up, you know, so. Uh, and they had, they got babies everywhere. I mean, so, you know, it's, uh, you know, these are just uh, things that you do as a hobbyist or as a breeder. You know, someone that wants to breed for money. Uh, someone that wants to breed to, I don't know, make, you know, colors, you know, which you just call a hobby. It's just having fun. But the thing is, is like I said, you, it, you're like a little scientist, you know, you, you want to stay within the parameters cause you don't want to kill anything. But I mean, you could tweak these numbers in to where your shrimp just breed and you can get all these gorgeous colors and go crazy and. And realize that this stuff is not hard. It is not hard. I'm telling you right now, it's not hard. But, you know, it, it's, it's, you got to spend a little time on it. You know, you got, you can't just throw them in a tank like it's a goldfish and walk away. I mean, one day a goldfish is going to die too. And even a betta, you know. So, I mean, don't get into the hobby if you don't have time to do it or you don't want to do it or you don't have a drive to you know, raise an animal that needs time. You know, you got to spend time on it like you do your children, your family, you know, washing your car, 
whatever, you know, it's time. So, but yeah, it's, it's not scary whatsoever. So the, the things I covered today is the pancreas. Uh, you know, it's really easy to take care of. Uh, it's, uh, what do they say? One one hundredth of a gram or one tenth. Yeah, I think it's one one hundredth of a gram. So I broke it down in the tenths, you know, so I broke, you know, I broke it down in a, tried to break it down in a 10 equal parts, um, in one gram. And then I would put that amount in the tank. And it was, you know, right around, <coughs> excuse me, uh, uh, one of those little spoons. So I just stopped and I figured, you know, that'd be enough. If it's not enough, I'll know because I'll see planaria again. I don't see planaria ever anymore. So I just put in, you know, like I said, less than the spoon sometimes and just dose it like that and leave it and it seems to kill everything plus i don't run thick substrate you know there's there's not i mean i don't know a quarter inch maybe you know shoot not yeah it's it, half inch probably half inch we'll say half inch yep yeah, half inch three quarter half inch probably though but uh i don't run it real deep so i don't have like super deep substrate where it has to penetrate and get way down in there and I'm missing some. I'm not saying it, you know, that's what I'm, I'm not saying that I get every one of them, but next time I see planaria in here, hopefully it'll be never, but I'm sure I'll see it in here one day. Hope, you know, could be 6 months down the road. <clears throat> could be tomorrow. You know, but it should be a long time. So, pancreas C don't really have to worry about like now, I'm not saying if you dump a whole pack in there, it's not going to kill your shrimp. But if you do the little bit that I'm talking about, I've never had a death from it. Uh, they say it is detrimental to snails. Uh, can't kill snails. Um, I <coughs> I don't see it. Um, you know, the, I, I dose this thing. There's still snails in there. I mean, there's small amounts of snails, uh, but there's still snails in there. None of them are dying off. So uh, that's not, I mean, unless you put in a large amount, I don't think it'll kill what they're talking about. But if you're doing like three doses, you know, there's a good possibility. I just don't have an issue to where I'm having to put that much in uh, to have to worry about it really killing anything but the planarium. So, uh, so yeah, then part two, we were talking about, uh, fear of raising or keeping caridinia. I don't know. To me, it's as simple as keeping a neocaridinia. I mean, that I use tap water. This I use RO water. It's not like I'm over there sifting out all the bad stuff out of the water. I have filters that do it <coughs> and it puts it into a container I pump it out of that and I put it in the tanks. You know, I put, you know, my minerals in it, but what's an extra three minutes, uh, you know, reading water to put in a caridina tank compared to a neo caridina tank? To me, it's nothing to have, you know, such pretty shrimp on both uh, ends of the spectrum. You know, because those are my <coughs> tigers. And these are my sapphires. And I don't know. I just, I like to keep all this moss when I'm, you know, when I'm getting the colony going because they just go crazy. And as the stuff grows, I take it out. But, uh, you know, that one back there is crappy. But look at that one in the front. Just gorgeous. I mean, I have shrimp everywhere. But, again, I haven't touched this tank since I... I haven't sold anything out of it, nothing. I haven't done a thing to it. And, I mean, I bought, ooh, I don't know, how many did I buy? I think 20 to see how they did. And I think uh, he even sent me, um, 
<coughs> excuse me, some that were pregnant in the beginning. So they kind of showed up buried and they literally took off and they do great. So, I mean, super simple. Uh, you know, I don't do nothing. I just put in water, you know, uh, dechlorinate the water a little bit with some prime. Uh, just put it in there, you know, slowly. And they just stay happy. They don't ever, you know, I don't know. It's just simple. It's so, so simple. So don't get discouraged. You know, like I said, slow and steady. Take your time. Don't speed up. Uh, and then thirdly, I want to throw another another one in here really quick. Um, because I want to bring it to you guys. Because uh, that's the thing. It's, you know... It's tips, tools, and strategies I'm trying to bring to you guys. You know, I'm trying to catch your attention because, you know, I'm able to bring stuff to you that cuts your learning curve down to nothing. You know, it, it might take me a month, two months, three months to figure something out. I could tell you, and then you could tweak it in with yours, and, you know, it'd take you a week, two weeks. So these are things that I'm trying to do for you guys. But here's... uh Here's something that I've been working on, and it's worked tremendously. I mean, I can't believe um, the change that I'm seeing in my tanks. Feeding. Okay. Uh, before I'd feed, <coughs> and I have these trays, you know, and I have the tubes, you know, that I made, you know, all this stuff to go down and to only go into, to that tray. Well, my problem was, I was running into a couple problems. Some of my shrimp were staying smaller than the others. So I realized, and I was, you know, directed and told from friends and other hobbyists and breeders that uh, they're not all eating. Uh, you know, it's kind of like uh, only the strong will survive. Well, I, I don't play that in my tanks and that ain't happening. There's no, you're not ganging up on nobody around here. There's no bullying in this school. So... This is a school of hard knocks. Uh, everyone gets along in this school. But anyways, so some were smaller than others. I was like, man, what's going on? Why are these shrimp, why are so many of my shrimp so small, but I have like these other ones that are massive? Well, I'd put food in there. This is where I was messed up. This I put food in there, and let's say they didn't come right away. I'm like, oh, I gotta put some more food in there. They don't like smell it, or they don't realize it's there. Uh, you know, I'd put quite a bit of food in that tray. Well, it seemed like the snails would come to it faster than the shrimp would, and then when the shrimp showed up, uh, there would be, you know, only so many shrimp showing up, and then they'd have to compete with the snails um so you know i was like oh my gosh what's going on and everybody always says you know don't overfeed don't overfeed don't overfeed well you know it's it's really hard to pull back on the reins isn't it you know to say oh i can't feed them they're not going to get fed so much they're not going to get fed so much you know that they're, they're going to starve no one's going you know the the babies aren't going to eat so then i just started you know uh some people say powder is better than you know, dropping a hard piece of, you know, shrimp food in there, you know, and so then what I started to do is I'd take my hard food and I'd bust it up into pieces and I'd <coughs> drop it in different parts of the tank. Well, then I'd notice, like, you know, the big sh shrimp were on it 